looking at a beautiful wall covering that could become a potential disaster if the walls are not straight. I went off of my corner, which to my surprise is perfectly straight. Now we're working with commercial vinyl, which stretches, but it's not gonna stretch that much. So I put my line in the corner and I decided, let's see if the edge is straight, meaning plumb, and it is. But if your corner were not straight, you wouldn't want that line in the corner. You would choose something about right there. Because anywhere else, you're gonna get all these mismatches. And so the line, if you put it right in the corner, if it's close to straight, in which case this is very straight, but if it's close to straight, then you can move the wallpaper on this side and on that side accordingly. But it turns out, thankfully, that it's nice and straight. If your walls are really off, you stop the job and tell the contractor or the owner, this is not the right paper for this. I need your approval if you want mismatched lines. This has caused me trouble in the past. People order wallpaper that's not suited for their particular space. People don't want to hear that their walls are crooked. They don't want to hear that their walls are not plumb. They will attribute any lack of compliance in the wallpaper to your skill level, which is unfair. So I'm here to tell you, the contractor or the customer who hires a wallpaper hanger, that it's up to the wallpaper hanger to determine whether or not the pattern you have chosen is conducive to looking its best, as opposed to choosing something else, which might be more appropriate for your space. Here's something that'll drive you crazy. This is very important for you to figure out where you should place this sheet in relation to this one before you cut it. Now there's an easy way to do it and there's a hard way to do it. This, see, these are chevrons, okay? You see that? This is a variation of a pattern known as chevrons and perhaps I'll put that in the name of the video. But here's what I wanna show you. If you try to match this pattern here, you might do great, but the vinyl doesn't comply with perfection with regard to level. You'll see it goes up a sixteenth of an inch, down a sixteenth of an inch, but if you put a four foot level across, you'll find that from one end to the other it's level, but in between, you're not level. You're off a bit, and if you decide to cut through this sheet of paper, before before you have perfection. Well, this line is gonna be a little higher than the next one. So there has to be an easier way, right? Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to, we're going to eliminate four and a half inches of our pattern here. Okay, you have what's called a vertical repeat and a horizontal repeat. Just check it out. You see this whole thing here? That's, seven inches of pattern. That's your repeat. From here to here is seven inches. From here to here is seven inches. So we're going to simply take this sheet and put it right where it should be with its counterpart next to it. We're not going to play games. We're just gonna join points the likes of which you see right in the center of your screen. That's the only way we can do it. Wouldn't you agree that cutting on the line or right next to it in the middle of your screen is the best way to go than to deal with all of these horizontal lines and, and angular lines, which will not meet up? That's the way to go, let's do it. Now before someone says I should get rid of the selvage, which is this manufacturing white strip on the edge. Let me just say, I'm using it. I'm using it 
to go right up to the corner of each of these triangles. And since it's a factory installed edge and is perfectly parallel with the pattern to its left, I'm going to make sure that since my pattern is square with the corner, with the ceiling, and with the floor, that my selvage is providing an additional means by which I can determine and be assured that my pattern is still square, one with its counterpart. Okay, so if you look on each of the points in the center of your screen, you see this triangle. You see this, in the center of your screen, you see this diamond. And you see its point lining right up with a line to its right. Same thing here, same thing here, same thing here, so on and so on and so on. And so now all I have to do is to ensure that my lines, my vertical lines here, and my horizontal lines here are at right angles with each other and remain horizontally level and vertically plumb. Let's talk about the top of the pattern. Ideally, your walls are perfectly straight and the baseboard and the line at the ceiling are perfectly parallel, ideally speaking. But since that is rarely the case, on a pattern like this, do you see where I don't have any horizontal lines near the ceiling? What I mean by that is, here's a horizontal line, but you don't see one up at the top, right? Because I can't guarantee that this ceiling is not gonna come out from here to over here, perhaps an inch. And in that case, I would obscure a line if I had it there, right? Something that might be imperceptible to the eye when you're passing by this hallway. But nevertheless, something that you'll see immediately if the ceiling should be imperfect or should have suffered a repair throughout the life of this installation or perhaps even before. I'm not here to fix ceilings, I'm here to hang wallpaper. And if the ceiling isn't right, and I aggravate the situation by hanging the wallpaper with these lines right near the ceiling, and the guy who did the ceiling was imperfect, guess what? It's going to show very noticeably. So you wanna keep any lines away from your ceiling. And then sometimes it's inevitable to have them at the bottom. So we have a line at the bottom, but I can tell you it's less noticeable at the bottom than it is at the top. People tend to look up so they don't walk into things. And while they're looking up, they're looking at your ceiling line, not down there. So you have to make a choice as to where you're going to hide any imperfections in the environment in which you're hanging this paper. So after having taken all of these considerations to mind, trimming the top, having trimmed the bottom, we're now ready to render the double cut scene. And this is something, before you trim the bottom and the top, this is something you wanna check out from a distance because you can be wrong, you can be missing something. You wanna study it, you wanna take the time and just slow down a moment. And so what I did was I counted each of these vertical lines. I measured the distance between each of these lines. And so, once you study the pattern, the only thing left is to trust your expertise and cut it now in a place least likely to manifest any imperfection in your hand or in the wall underneath. Remember, if there should be a slight bulge here, it's gonna throw the pattern off just a hair, okay? So where would you cut that? in order to manifest the least amount of imperfection. Okay, so we're cutting right over its identical counterpart underneath it. Where would you cut it? 
If I cut it here, I have all of these things that must meet up. One. Actually, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, 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 no. That's silly to cut it there. What if that's off a little bit? Wouldn't you agree to cut it right down here? Come on, we gotta think together. All you're relying on is this to be on top of the one underneath it, instead of all of these matching. Wouldn't you agree? Come on, that's the, that's the place where you're gonna cut it. And even if you're slightly off here, here, the eye does not catch that these, it doesn't look at that as much as it's gonna notice this. So let's do that. So let's talk about what I'm doing here. There was a lot of noise with many other workers passing back and forth. I took a straight edge, which you see behind my right hand there, and I placed it over the area I was just speaking about, where the diamond is, right in the center. That's what I'm cutting through right here. If you didn't understand what I was talking about, if you're, if you're new to hanging paper, or if you're just a beginner who's done it a couple of times, it's very important that you understand that the double cut if you understand nothing else, please understand that the double cut, which I'm doing right here, and which you will do on your wall covering, has to be cut in an area on the pattern that has the least amount of pieces in the pattern that you will cut through. And so the only place on that pattern that has the least amount of connections is dead center of the diamond. If you choose anywhere else, you have all of those lines that are going to show any inconsistencies that you may create by cutting through them. Take your time. Don't rush. If you have a GC asking you, when are you going to be done? When are you going to be done? Which is what they like to do. Tell them, I don't know when I'm going to be done. I have to go slowly here. Planning is key to successful wallpaper installation. And standing there doing nothing except looking at the pattern is sometimes something you have to do for upwards of five to 10 minutes to truly understand how it's going to look when you get through it and when you're looking for payment. You see that? You see that perfection there? You see how I cut through the diamond there? That's what you want to do on your pattern. You see that? And I only figured it out after looking at it for several minutes. And so when I've hung Subway restaurant wallpaper, which is notorious for their chevrons, I take this into consideration. They don't have a diamond that I can cut through. And so it's a little more difficult to cut their wallpaper. But I always go through the area that has the least amount of lines. And this strip is called the selvage, S-E-L-V-A-G-E, selvage. Actually, strictly speaking, a selvage is a strip that keeps woven material bound. That's not what this is doing, but it's called a selvage. They have real selvages on fabrics that actually do prevent the fabric from coming apart. <clears throat> we're going to remove this strip and we're going to produce the pattern right to the edge of the white strip. Okay? 
so that when we match it up, we'll actually see this line, this line, this piece, all meet up with its counterpart underneath it. Okay? And then you can determine which is the manner you want to proceed based on what you see in this video, perhaps. Let's do it. Removing the selvage brings the pattern right up to its counterpart underneath. So you might like this way better. You'll see that I have to bring it over to the right. Be even though I'm not going to cut it here, this can't be correct if this isn't, right? So that's your puzzle right here. If you get that all together, you know that you're good in the middle. Let's do that. After I get all my pattern met up with my edge, right? Now, I'm just checking it over. Here's my edge. And I see that I had to adjust it when I was off screen. And now I'm confident that to the best of my ability, it's met up. And where am I going to cut it? Right here. So that it'll look as nice as over there. Let's do our second cut. So let's review. We cut off the selvage on the second cut to show you what you would prefer to do it with the selvage or without it. And then we lined up the pattern. In my opinion, it's easier to line up the pattern. I'm sure you would agree. And now that we did, we cut the top, we cut the bottom. Don't panic if it doesn't come all off in one piece. You can always adjust. Okay, that came off. So far, so good, right? Well, let's see how it looks after we get our underlap out of there. Again, looks good, but let's see. Let's match it up. And you tell me what you think. I'm about to say, wow, how about you? If anyone watching this video is saying, Oh, I could never do that. Don't you dare say that. If you do what I just did, I'll bet you you're an expert after three tries. You can do this. You can do it. And you know you can. Very nice. 
Let's bring it down here. Please do not think I'm such a great wallpaper installer. You're great. If you follow these instructions and you fail twice, that's completely normal. Do it again. I'll bet you get it on the third time if you didn't get it on the first or second. Patience, patience, patience and have somebody else with you if you're doing it. Sometimes you get so involved with the project, you can't see your error. That happened to me recently. Couldn't see it. Okay, you can do this. You can do this. This is a matter of following instructions. You can do this.